Ambassador of Guinea Bissau. Well, how do you do? It's a great pleasure to see you. I think they would like us over in front of the fire. Congratulations, and also, you're going to be pretty busy at the meeting. I understand you're also the uh, now permanent ambassador of the United Nations. Yes, sir. Well, wish you, wish you well. Please give my regards to your family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, the Ambassador of Sierra Leone. Well. Good afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. Good to see you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I think they'd like us over in front of the fireplace there for, for the photo. Thank you. Well, this is back after 16 years' absence. Yes. Well, I have the honor to present my letters of credence and the letters of recall of my predecessor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, and my best regards to your, your president. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. President, the Ambassador of Luxembourg. Well, Mr. Ambassador, hello, President. I'm deeply honored to present you with that by which you spent time spent. Let's go over here in front of the fire, please. And uh, we're, we'd like that better for the photo. And we'll do it here. All right. There we go. Thank you. Well, you're very pleased with the relationship between our two countries. And appreciative of the help, such as a recent visit to, uh, to Moscow, the your officials and their presentation of, our, of the case for our uh, United Defense in Europe and all. You know that for us, um, common defense can only be worked out through NATO. And a credible defense of Europe is unthinkable if it cannot be done through the attendee appliance to which we all were stuck since its inception in 1949. Yes, we feel that way too. And again, welcome. Pleased to have you here. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm deeply honored. President, the Ambassador of Qatar. Yes, Ambassador, welcome. I think you would like us right over here in front of the fireplace. For I like the picture here better. Well, well welcome back. Thank you. Second time to compete for well, we I think we're both hopeful that one of these days we can bring to an end the Iran Iraq war that's going on there. Well, welcome again. Pleased to have you here. The Ambassador of Spain. Well, Mr. Ambassador, we want to be Nice to have you here. Miss Phillips is interesting. Well, we're pleased to have you. We should go over in front of the fireplace. Hold on. forward to the king's son's visit here. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that uh, I will be visiting you with, with him. And the king of Spain, with whom I have been very recently, sends to you his best wishes and uh, uh, decides for happiness. Uh, Please return my regards to him. He's planning to 
to come to visit uh, California, Texas, and New Mexico in early the fall. I would appreciate it very much to meet with you at your home country in California if you have the time. I I appreciate very much the excuse to go to California. <laughs> I shall lean on everyone to make sure we can do that. Yes, well. I, this, present, this is a present that I want to pass on to you. It's the first Spanish constitution which has been enforced also in California, the Floridas and most of the territories of the West Pacific. It's wonderful. It's a oops. maximize the Constitution has 1812 has at the end at the end the signatures. Thank you for all the people. Oh thank you very much. I'm pleased to have it. Our ranch in California was once a Spanish land grant, was it? Yes. Uh, there are 75 people uh, from the New World who participated in the drafting of this constitution. And it's an well, honor really, for me to... Well, I'm very pleased to have that. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I was going to say for a minute there, I forgot to leave. And I'll look to see, make sure we have exchanged our documents. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, pleased to have you here. I hope that Felipe and we can work out the problems about our bases. I'm sure we will. I think sure so. We, we have a good relationship. And I hope uh, to work very closely with your organization in order to draw in our relationship as much as possible and to ground them a solid uh, base yes. and lasting one as is possible. Listen. Thank you. Thank you very much. President, the Ambassador of Barbados. Well, Mr. Ambassador, welcome. Pleased to have you here. And Lady Douglas. Hello. Please have you. you and I will go over in front of the fireplace, exchange our papers, and then you will come in with us. Thank you. Right. Well, I have some happy memories of our visit there in 1982 yes, to your yes, country. Yes, indeed. I remember very well that visit. Well, we still have pictures of you on the beach. <laughs> 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 we have many happy memories, and also a very more recent happy memory, and that is uh, our cooperation in freeing the people of Grenada. Yes, yes, yes indeed. Right. indeed. Didn't you come on and join us? <coughs> It's a climate as Barbados. <laughs> You're trying to do it. It's excellent. Yes, yes, this is, this is nice. Well, welcome, and I Thank you so hope, much. You, I hope you find it very pleasant. Please, with the relationship. 
relationship, particularly since our Secretary of State visited your country a short time ago. Ambassador South Africa. Yes, I'm so pleased to see you. Well, pleased to see you. Right on, Madam Well, you and I will go over in front of the fireplace to exchange our papers for the photo. Yeah, take it. Mrs. Conn. Hello. Nice to see you. And then after we take the picture, we'll ask you to come in and have a picture. It's kind of you. Thank you. Good night. We're very hopeful that now that your election over, that things will be good. Well, I hope so. It's best. I'm so sorry that I can't bring you more positive information yet as I have with your account. I'm really hopeful that it will come. Do I have this over to you now? Yes. This is a, a letter of presence, a letter of call, and my uh, notes of address to you. All right. I am here and over to you. I've got a little card for you, but that is just for you and Mrs. Lake and Preston. I hope I'm allowed to do that. I did that this morning. Thank you. God bless. Now, let's have your lady come in. Thanks, Mr. Preston. You're smart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're pleased to have you both here. Yeah, thank you. So I oh, guess we can us. be of help. Yeah. Yeah, the violence is still in our country. All right. God bless you, Mr. Wallace. Thank you. Thank you for your passage. I believe very strongly. Yes, thank you. Take questions on that. We're here on a matter of the debt ceiling. It's all important. And 
I have made answers to those particular questions over and over again, and I still sit with them. Sir, do you think that Mr. Meese should stay on the job while an independent counsel in, uh, investigates him? I've issued a statement on that matter with regard to my trust and confidence in him. Lights, please. Brady, pull this way, please. How'd you like uh, the vice president's speech on ethics and morality? <laughs> I like anything you does. <laughs> 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 Thank you for coming down this afternoon to discuss the debt ceiling, which is always a difficult issue, but something we have to face up to. I understand you'll be facing up to it in committee right after our meeting here. That's just inconsequential, the main purpose of the meeting, which is to give our champion golfer some golf <laughs> Years, but this year it is different, actually different, because at midnight May 15th, the temporary debt limit, as you know, will expire. But unlike previous years, however, that there aren't any administrative actions that are available to prolong the availability of cash. Without congressional action, therefore, the United States government will run out of cash by May 28th, according to the estimates of the Treasury Department, and will then have to default on its debt if we haven't raised the ceiling. We've never had defaulted in the history of the United States. And to do so now, I think, would result, as we all know, in unthinkable consequences, severe disruption of domestic and international money markets, and, as well as increasing interest rates here at home. Now, I understand the political dilemma faced by Republicans on this issue. For a half a century, the running of a deficit in this country has not been a Republican task, and we've been against it, and sometimes we have always shown our opposition by not wanting to raise that debt ceiling, but I believe the consequences of default present a far greater risk than voting for debt limit legislation. So we really need your help on this and urge you to support a clean debt ceiling increase in the committee and then help us get it passed on the floor. Now I'd like to have John Duncan and Bob Michael lead off the discussion with your perspectives, what to do in the days ahead, John. Thank you, Mr. President, for inviting us down. Uh, as I indicated, <laughs> Second, the, the uh, babblers, and uh, from there in here, I'm going to read the statements. Yeah, 
take up necessary legislation to raise the public debt limit, and this is something that both Republicans and Democrats in Congress must address. We also need to discuss this morning the budget process and how that can be improved. But first, I want to speak again to my growing concern with the course of legislation in Congress that could have a direct bearing on the arms reduction talks. The House already has attached to the Defense Authorization Bill several unacceptable provisions. The Senate bill is equally troublesome on strategic defense issues. As I said on Saturday, some in Congress would pull the legs out from under our negotiators with amendments to this legislation, such as those dealing with our strategic defense <coughs> program and nuclear testing. And I simply can't go along with those who would hand the Soviets, free of charge, what they can't win at the bargaining table. This is no way to run America's foreign policy and I would be compelled to veto any legislation that endangers our arms reduction efforts or undermines our national defense. Many of you have been outspoken in your opposition to such proposals, and I want to thank you for your steadfast support and working to give me a free hand in negotiations with the Soviet Union. And I also want to thank Bob Dole and John Warner for sending me a letter with 34 signatures in support of striking an amendment that unduly restricts our SDI program. That's the end of that, and now shortly we'll get underway with our discussion. Mr. President, did you personally ask third countries to contribute money to the conference? <clears throat> Sam, I made an opening statement, and I have said that I'm not going to answer any questions on those things until this is over. If I were going to answer any questions, I'd say no. What did you think, sir? What did you think, sir, when you were told that uh, a tour had been given in the White House for an Iranian official? Oh, uh, I got a tour of the White House one time, Mr. President. Sam gave it. And answer any questions in case you leave the question. Sure, I can certainly listen to the president. It answers the question. Sir, what do you think about the tour of the White House? You are. I have no memory of what I have to have. You mean you didn't know about it at all? Nope. We were obviously out of the city. <laughs> no, come on. We would would you have let him do it if you'd been here? How did Khomeini like the tour? Time is up. Hang on after you say what is the question. What are they waiting for? <laughs> 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 Only 
You know, every time I'm someplace else in another country, it's so wonderful. Their press corps is always so damn polite. <laughs> well, now, I think it's time for us to get down to business, and I'd like to call on George first and then Frank Hurts to speak to these developments that I just mentioned as well as to the impact of budget reductions on our foreign assistance and defense program. So, really, I know that's a subject dear to your heart. Well, thank you, Mr. President. 